Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access Trader.com. Uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody had a good rest. Hope everybody had a good uh, trading day. And hopefully everybody just enjoying and are happy and fulfilled uh, with their lives. Uh, thank you very much for uh, tuning in and showing us continued support. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, all we ask is support the channel. Just like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, all that good stuff uh, so we can continue uh, to help you down the road of unbiased uh, technical analysis. So let's dive right into it. So last week, a uh, very, uh, very, very aggressive week after uh, two weeks, two and a half weeks of a 6% plus uh, decline in the NASDAQ 100. Last week, we saw the opposite. We saw more uh, than 6.6% gain on the index. Obviously, all the under indexes uh, rose as well, but our focus, my focus is obviously... Uh, the NASDAQ 100, the high beta uh, mega cap space. And the question was going into today's session was, well, we got a 6.6% move in one week. Can they continue to build, right? Can they continue to build? Obviously, after a 6.6% move, there's always going to be an opportunity that say, hey, you know what? Be careful. Don't look at the overextended names because there's always potential for a rug pull. Here is the curveball, right? And this is kind of where new traders make the mistake uh, all the time, right? Um, so above the 50 day moving average is bullish. Okay. Below the 50 day moving average is bearish. Is it bullish for every single stock? Absolutely not. Is it bearish for every single stock? Well, it's below the 50 day moving average. Absolutely not. It, it's all case by case basis. But when an index ETF underlying security, whatever the case may be, is above the 50 day moving average, the higher it stays or the higher probability it's going to start pulling everything up. The biggest mistake I see new traders continuously do is this, okay? When the market gets below the 50-day moving average and starts going down day one, day two, the market's oversold. How can, you, how can you sell stock? And then it goes down three weeks later. Now the market's going up day two above the 50-day moving average. The market's overbought, right? It's day two above the 50-day moving average, right? This is these, these are not a big... You know, these are not little levels. These are not insignificant events. These are big deals, guys. This is the, the start of a trend, not a trade, but a trend. And the longer, and we discussed it over the weekend video, the longer we stay and continue to build above the 50-day moving average, the higher probability most stocks will continue to get pulled up and the higher probability that every single dip will get bought. That's exactly what a bull market action is above the 50-day moving average. The opposite uh, is is uh, valid as well to the downside, right? The longer we were below the 50-day moving average, every single rally, remember every single video we kept on saying, stop buying the gaps, right? Stop buying the gap ups because every single time you buy a gap up underneath supply, there's a higher probability it's gonna get stuffed at supply, get rejected and start taking out the previous day's channel. Well, that's the opposite of what we're seeing now. This morning we saw a gap up, right? A little bit of a gap up, a little bit of a run, a slight pull, and guess what happened on the pull? Stocks got bought up. So the longer we stay above the 50-day moving average, the stocks that had big runs, they're probably going to continue to be bit up into rising support, whether it's the rising 60-minute support or the rising daily support. But the last thing you want to do is try to time the market. Nobody can time the market. We don't know anything, guys. The, the, most, uh, the most experienced trader out there okay does not have a crystal ball we could only we could only prepare ourselves for both sides of the market and then just kind of get out of the way and let price action tell us which way we, we should be right and which way uh we should have confirmation but the last thing you should be doing especially as a new trader and i saw this throughout the whole weekend at the open i'm buying puts why why i, I don't i don't understand the logic why because you think the market's going to come down it's the same reason as people were talking about when the market was coming in, day two, day three, below the 50-day moving average, talking about, I'm buying calls at the open. No way the market go down again. No way, right? Absolutely no way. We're day two, right? We were day two below the 50-day moving average, and the Qs were at 365. No way they can go low, right? Absolutely no way, okay? They went all the way down to 342. 
So the idea that you're waking up in the morning, woken up uh, this morning or waking up tomorrow morning and say, this is the day the market's going to reverse. And maybe it does, right? Think about it. It's common sense. Gravity is real. We just had a 6% plus move. Of course, there's going to be a day that the market eventually gives back. But here's the key, right? And write this down. If you've never, if you've never gotten anything out of this broadcast or anything out of me, and again, I'm doing this next year's me in nearly a quarter of a century for me, okay? Just understand this part, okay? This is the most basic part of technical analysis. Write this down. A stock cannot go higher, okay, if it doesn't take out the previous day's range. Write that down. A stock cannot go higher, okay? So if the previous day's high is 100, okay, it cannot go higher unless it takes out that 100 and starts building. A stock cannot go lower if it doesn't take out the previous day's range lows, right? So if the previous day's low was 100, and today's low is 101, I promise you the stock's not going to go lower. It might trickle down, but it won't go lower. So this is the most basic stuff. And if you look at all the candles in the last week or so, what's the common denominator, right? This candle took out this candle. This candle took out this candle. This candle took out this candle. Higher, higher, higher. We're making higher highs. That's why the market continues to go higher. The only way the market becomes a short, say, for example, for tomorrow, right? Again, anything could happen. The only way, at least the day could become a short, I don't want to use the word market becomes a short, because again, as long as we're above the 50 day, the only way tomorrow becomes a short is if the Qs lose today's lows range, okay? It cannot go lower if we don't lose today's range. So the idea that you're guessing, right? The idea that you're anticipating, guessing, trying to outsmart the market when you basically what you're doing is you're trying to outsmart yourself. Just wait, take a deep breath right? Take a deep breath, okay? You don't need to go into tomorrow talking about that's it. I'm buying puts at the open. Take a deep breath. Calm yourself down, right? Go to the sauna in the morning. Do some yoga in the morning. Hell, if you have to take a shot of Hennessy, right? To mellow yourself out again, your kidney stones probably will, will be bloody and black 10 years from now. But do what you have to do to calm down, guys. And just remember, if it doesn't take out the previous day's low, it's not a short. The same way if it doesn't take out the previous day's high, it's not a long. Understand the dynamics of the market. This has nothing to do with the PS60 theory. This is the most basic thing of technical analysis. The day's long, has to confirm. The day's short, has to confirm. And that's where it all gets. And right now, if you're looking at every single stock that had big, big runs over the last week or so, look what they did today, right? Look what they did today. They either priced and proved or they rest it. That's a good, natural, organic flow of the market, right? Let's take a look at them one by one. Amazon today, right? Price improved. That's a good thing. Microsoft today, price improved. That's a good thing, right? Apple, we talked about Apple shaking off earnings over the weekend video, right? Price improved. That's a good thing. Netflix, right? Price improved. That's a good thing. You see where I'm going with this? So how can you sit there? And these are the biggest stocks, right? These are the most biggest aggressive institutional money flow. And they're making higher highs. How can you turn around and say, this is the day I'm buying puts? Why? Just let them take out the previous day's range. That's all you need to do, right? Then you look at the names that are resting. AMD, right? AMD today, nice rest, right? Nice rest. Had a big, big run up rest today, right? You see, you notice today it didn't take out the previous day's range. That's why AMD didn't go higher today because it didn't take out the previous day's range. Look at Shopify, correct, right? Look what, Look at Shopify. Did it take out yesterday's highs? No, that's why the stock didn't go higher. If, if, like this should, be like a, this should be like a light bulb moment going into every new trader's heads, right? The reason why it didn't go down, guess what? Because it didn't take out the previous day's low either. That's the whole point of an inside day. Very, very basic stuff, guys. And again, unfortunately, most new traders, if somebody doesn't tell you this, right, how would you ever ever possibly even learn this, right? And that's the whole point. This is why I'm trying to give little golden nuggets here uh, on the YouTube channel. Obviously in the webinar, we cut, you know, we 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 literally uh, tackle everything from night, from nut, uh, nut to bolt, man. There's nothing, there's no rocket that's uh, that's not overturned, but these are basic things in, in your trading journey that you have to understand early on. You're gonna still making these, these mistakes, try to anticipate where the market's going to go. So going into tomorrow, again, here's the key metric for the bulls. The QQQs, again, remember, as long as we are staying above the 50-day moving average, again, that's 364, right? That's what we reclaimed. So as long as we're staying above the 364 level, that's bullish. Every dip, the, the, every dip you need to be buying on rising support. The only time it becomes a short, ready? 
da, 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 is when it takes out the previous day's low. And is it is it possible it happens tomorrow? Absolutely. Anything's possible. But the point is, that is the key metric. Uh, tomorrow, also, uh, for earnings, let's see what we got here. For earnings for tomorrow, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see if anybody, anything juicy for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, we got Rivian. Uh, we got eBay, Uber, uh, Robinhood, nobody cares, Gilead. I think that is it. Akami. And Wednesday, we have Tulo, Disney, Roblox, Lyft. I think we're starting in a firm. Thursday, we have TTD, uh, Wind Resorts, Wolverine Worldwide. We're getting, we're getting, I know next week, next week's gonna be the big one uh, on uh, the 21st of November. The following week, we have uh, NVIDIA, which, which is gonna be obviously. Uh, a big support zone, a big support uh, area, especially for uh, the semiconductors. We'll see what happens uh, there. So let's talk about the pivots, right? So most days, uh, most uh, day, uh, most of the day, stocks rested. They finally get a little surge up. They try to take them down. Guess what? They didn't take out the previous day's channel, and they squeeze them back into the close. So here was, uh, here is basically all the pivots for the day. Again, I'm always prepared for both sides of the market. Tesla, guys, keep an eye on Tesla. Not every single stock had a success story today. Tesla 218.40 is the 200-day support if it builds below can flush. So here is Tesla, right? So it took out the 218.40, lost the 200-day moving average, and put it low, went all the way down to 15. Again, was it supposed to be the biggest trade in the world today? No, but the key thing here is it lost its 200-day. Uh, what it did, to its credit, it reclaimed the 200-day moving average on the close. So you see how tight Tesla is getting here, right? You see how tight Tesla is getting here? You're gonna, you have the rising support here, the five-day rising, and you have now it's got rejected back-to-back -back days from what, Thursday, uh, thir Thursday, excuse me, Friday's highs and today's highs. You see the same area, right? This is, again, why Tesla didn't go higher today. It got rejected um, below Friday's channel. So it's starting to get tighter. It's going to be very, very curious to see which way Tesla finally confirms uh, this week, but it's definitely, definitely getting tighter. Again, congratulations for all you guys. Uh, who did catch that move on Tesla today. Uh, DraftKings, right? Uh, either a dip to 33, again, that's the rising support, or 34.21 needs to confirm. Here was DraftKings. Uh, I was looking for that dip buy of DraftKings at 33 and never got there, unfortunately. Put in the low of uh, 33.36. It's just a shame because what? look what happened, right? DraftKings took out the previous day's high, right? Took out the previous day's range. That's why the stock went higher. It took out the previous day's range, 34.21, and traded up all the way up to 35.14. This thing's continuously uh, looks higher. Good job for all you guys who took that as well. Uh, crowd never got to 192. Apple, okay, we talked about Apple on the weekend. Update, uh, 177.80, rejected twice, needs to build. Here was Apple, right? Rejected, here's a 77.80, rejected once. 77.80, rejected twice. They finally reclaimed the 150-day and pretty much closed at the highs of the day of 179.40. is really good move here. It looks higher, especially if the market continues higher. And NVIDIA. NVIDIA, uh, I got long NVIDIA on the opening range high. Uh, 53 was Friday's channel. Again, do you see the theme here, right? You see the theme here? Stock took out the previous day's channel, right? And look what happened. It went higher. That's the point. I uh, took out the 53 level. I traded up all the way to 459. Uh, big uh, call buying coming in. Ironically, ahead of earnings, we saw some uh, 475 and 480 uh, calls expiring 1117. Remember, they uh, report 1121. So it was very, very odd that they're buying uh, almost 20 points out of the money calls ahead of their earnings. But we'll see. You know, we'll see exactly there. So that's it, guys. Okay, it's a very, very important uh, lesson that every single year that goes by, you pick up something new. Hopefully, on today's video, you learn something new. If this is the first time hearing it, uh, again, just remember, just a little summary, for a stock to go higher, it has to take out the previous day's highs. For a stock to get lower, it needs to take out the previous day's lows. Other than that, it's called an inside day, didn't take out the highs, didn't take out the lows. That's called a rest day. When that stock rests, you rest along with it. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a great evening. Let's go Jets. You know, I don't believe that, but let's go Jets. All right, guys, have a great night, everybody. Take care.